I'm here in Austin, Texas with Ruby Bandari, founder of Silk Threads Designer Collection. Hi Ruby, welcome to Andaz. Thank you, Sarika. I'm glad to be here. So first I want to ask you, you started this collection in 1991 when there were hardly any South Asians in Austin. What inspired you to do so and how was that journey? You know, when I was 14 years old, I learned how to stitch and cut and, you know, we were so, so excited about getting fabrics from different places. We used to travel to London, New York. Um, we used to get Japanese fabrics that were available and we used to take it to India. And um, we used to make the most amazing designs and we used to bring them back. And because nothing is available or nothing was available um, in the United States at that time, um, by the time I was in college, I really felt like it's time. So Ruby, I noticed that your designs are the perfect blend of the East and the West. What inspires you from the East and what inspires you from the West to create your collection? Well, I think originally um, it was all Eastern. I was trying to bring India to the United States just because nothing was available. Everyone in America wanted something from India and they just wanted to bring India to them. The way our culture is, you know how all our mothers are. They want to bring everything over. Now today, everything has just changed. Now um, I look at designers like Dries Van Noten. He is my absolute favorite. Um, he actually has a blend of the most beautiful embroideries with the most amazing prints, which he, which he actually designs himself. So that has really inspired me to design prints, mix them with the embroideries, and bring out the most beautiful silhouettes. And because I was born in the United States, I think that it just happens by itself, where the East and the West just meet. Right. to me that you create silhouettes for South Asian women of various body types. Elaborate on that. How do you do that? Well, I think that most or many, many of the South Asian women tend to be more on the pear-shaped side. Mm -hmm. So they really, really want to accentuate their curves, but they want to look a little bigger on top, a little bit smaller on the bottom. They want to maybe make themselves a little more hourglass. So we actually do um, cuts. We start with a cut that's more flattering on top with the wider and the deeper necks. And then if there is a South Asian woman who is a little more conservative, we still do that, but then we'll shear them on the top. So these days we see a lot of mixed weddings. What do you do when a bride comes to you and she's not Indian, yet she's marrying into an Indian family? Do you have any special advice for her? Well, I think the best way to do this is to give you an example. Um, just recently I did an, uh, a wedding with a Jewish American girl and a Sikh Punjabi guy. Oh, wow. Um, the, the family, the, the Indian family, was extremely, extremely conservative. Very, very Punjabi, um, from Punjab. And the girl was a blonde. Mm -hmm. So she was very, very excited about doing um, a very Indian thing because she wanted to make her mother-in-law happy. But at the same time, you know, they're not used to this kind of thing. So she was all uh, excited about wearing reds and hot pinks and golds. But we had to give her bodies that were a little bit more uh, Western, just so that she could feel comfortable and at the same time have the traditional look that she wanted. So what future trends do you see coming up in fashion? You know what's funny is that these European designers, they're actually looking to India for those embroideries and you know the Indian inspired prints. And so I think what happens is we take those inspirations from those designers and then we turn them into Indian garments. So I think right now the best thing to say for right now is totally Indian ethnic embroideries, but very, very modern cuts. We are working a lot with a lot of European fabrics, a lot of laces. We take laces and we mix them with Indian brocades and woven fabrics, um, along with Japanese uh, raw silk, dupians, and then very, very um, Versace kind of prints. And we literally put those together and we cut and paste. A lot of mixing and matching. Um, and then we take our embroideries. We use a lot more Swarovskis. Um, we're gonna use a lot more of um, colored stones, mm -hmm. mixing them together. I think we're gonna see a lot more of that in the future. Well, thank you so much, Ruby. It's been such a pleasure to talk to you today. Avaz, brought to you in part by Kingfisher Airlines.